This book is Lose Not Your Heart by Pandit Sridam Sharma Acharya. Introduction Before pointing out the faults of others, search for faults in yourself and do your best to fix them first. Spend as much time doing this as you do criticizing others. Then you will realize that the harm caused by criticizing others can replace your happiness. Therefore, happiness only comes from removing this harm. People who wish to conquer the world should conquer themselves first. If you can do this, then you can conquer anything. People will not stand against you, but will be influenced by you. Recognize the need for spiritual contemplation. Performing social service without a spiritual outlook makes people obsessed with their own virtue. They consider themselves great philanthropists. They expect obedience and praise. Because of this, their increased arrogance makes them enemies of many. They become not philanthropists, but destroyers. Without a spiritual outlook, they can never develop humility, nor do they have the ability to change themselves. Such people go on committing endless mistakes and makes their own lives unbearable. Take refuge in your conscience. If you desire peace, capability, and energy, then take refuge in your conscience. Even if you deceive the entire world, you will never be able to deceive your conscience. If you consult it on every occasion, you will never lose your ability for moral discretion and no matter the opposition, you will be able to succeed. When you begin to think of yourself as the most virtuous and exemplary individual, your spiritual decay begins and you lose contact with your conscience. Make your life an offering. To make your life an offering, make sure that you comply with the following. See every person as worthy of kindness. Utilize your time in honesty and discipline. Work for the welfare of others. Limit your speech to worthy causes. Accept only that which you have honestly earned. Constantly keep God in your thoughts. Stay focused on your duties. Maintain your mental equilibrium. Making your life an offering is the sign of true intelligence and farsight. Your life cannot truly be considered an offering until you give up your ego. Keep smiling, keep laughing. Wake up. Do not rest until you have achieved your goal. If you regard gossip and ill will as trivial and refuse to acknowledge them, hostility will not increase. For such things, silence is the best response. True happiness comes from focusing on one's duty rather than on the shortcomings in others. Life is full of ups and downs, but we should always remain cheerful. What good is the face that cannot smile or laugh? Do not be irritated by criticism from others, and you will always retain your mental equilibrium. Surrender yourself. You must be prepared to face hardship in your life. You may be predisposed to feel that you cannot face them, but where you find doubt, tiredness, and despair in yourself, you will also find immense strength. Finish your work wholeheartedly and step aside. Let the results come to you in due course of time. Work to your full potential. Do not get discouraged by any situation. The only actions you can control are your own, not those of others. Do not criticize others and do not hold any expectations of them. There is no need to be afraid. Everything will turn out to be the best. Do not despair. You are standing on firm ground. Look to yourself for guidance. One who knows himself to be part of God neither blames failure on others nor attributes success to himself. He does not become blinded by his own power and fail to see the real situation. Be as cautious of your own ego as you would a rabid dog. Avoid attachment to your achievements as you would avoid a poisonous snake, and avoid people who will mock you for this. Direct every effort of your mind and heart towards God. Depending on others for your happiness ultimately leads to helplessness and misery. Look within yourself for direction, and not to others. Your true nature will help you become determined, and this determination will help you reach your goals. Introspect. Whatever happens, let it happen. Whatever is said about you, let it be said. You should consider these things as illusory and a mirage. If you have really detached yourself from the world, then why should such things affect you? Focus on inspecting yourself thoroughly for weakness. Only then can you begin the process of growth. Take advantage of every moment and every opportunity. Your path is very long and time is very short. 
Concentrate your inner strength on reaching your goal. Do not despair in any situation. Have faith not in the capacity of man, but in the capacity of God. God will show you the right way. Courtesy, Simplicity, Empathy, Compassion It is your responsibility to cultivate courtesy, simplicity, empathy, and compassion. Before looking for and criticizing faults in others, address the glaring flaws in yourself. If you are unable to control your speech, use it against yourself instead of others. First, discipline yourself. Without discipline, you cannot experience your true nature. Courtesy, simplicity, empathy, and compassion are all manifestations of this true nature. Disregard how others treat you and stay focused on your own growth. If you can grasp this, you have understood the greatest secret. Look for the treasure within yourself. Keep your mind engaged in useful tasks. Do not let it go idle. Take life seriously. The task of spiritual growth is before you, and the time is very short. If you are led astray by your own negligence, you alone will have to pay the price. Patience and hope will enable you to face any situation. Stand on your own feet and challenge the entire world if you need to, but you should only be satisfied after attaining your highest goals. When others look outside for worldly treasure, look inside for the treasure of yourself. Walk alone. Great men go far on their paths because they walk alone. Their inspiration comes from within. They alone spur their happiness and remove their sadness, and they are helped along only by their own activities. Loneliness is an undeniable truth. To be afraid of it feel inferior because of it, or lose sight of your duties because of it, is the greatest sin. What you believe to be loneliness is actually a kind of solitude given to you to develop your own inner strength. When you depend on yourself, you are better able to realize your full potential. Do not depend on others. The day you develop faith in the strength of your own hands, feet, and heart, your soul will tell you to go forth alone. Keeping high expectations of others is like building castles in the air, unreal and worthless. Pinning your hopes on others cripples your own originality and courage. The person who centers his life around another person becomes alone very quickly. Putting your life in another person's hand is like setting sail without knowing where you are going. Love, a great power. Love is a kind of power that can further any aspect of your life. It is impossible to bring about a change in anyone's thinking without love. Healthy mindsets are rarely ever formed through reasoning and arguments. Healthy mindsets as well as trust are developed through prolonged good company. The result of this prolonged good company is love. Therefore, a healthy mindset and trust are both results of love. We must use love to change others' outlook and way of thinking. Logic, intelligent arguments are not sufficient. If what you have to say is full of love and sympathy, the world will be willing to follow you. The cause of failure. We are constantly trying to force others to think and act according to our own beliefs. These attempts to correct others' behavior neither change their minds nor satisfy us. We justify controlling others in several ways. We believe that if we control them, we may acquire some immediate gain, or that the person is a hindrance to our progress, or that a person is constantly criticizing us, spreading rumors about us, etc. Using such reasoning to blame others for your own failure will not benefit you. Forget painful memories. 
When you find yourself recalling painful memories, the best thing to do is forget and ignore them. The way to preserve your emotional stability is to replace your unpleasant memories with pleasant ones. If you wish to keep your physical, mental, and emotional health, then learn to remove unhealthy memories in this way. Even if someone close to you has caused you grief, will you keep obsessing over your pain? Lose yourself in purposeful work and forget these painful experiences. The best way to free yourself from worry is to forget your misery. Control over happiness and unhappiness. Instead of being controlled by happiness and unhappiness, establish your mastery over them. This will render your life more interesting and meaningful. It is every person's responsibility to uplift himself and better his life, and you should fully involve yourself in this task. You can achieve a great deal if you take full advantage of favorable circumstances and are not afraid of adverse ones. Learn from every circumstance and move forward. As you progress, whatever seemed adverse will seem favorable. And then, when that time comes, you will be free from your sadness. Speak less, do more. Many people complain that nobody listens to them. They say that their comments go unheeded and their thoughts unappreciated and that they are tired of being ignored. The fault here lies in the speaker and not the listener. This is a demonstration of ignorance. Such people should find first their own fault by introspection. This will make their terrible lack of knowledge clear. When you know how to carry out your work, and led by example, your instructions will be followed. Speak little, if at all, but above all, involve yourself in your work, and your work will speak for you, and all others will try to follow your example. Therefore, speak less, do more. The effect of speech is fleeting, whereas the effect of your work will be long-lasting. The Call of Time Courage calls to us. The current era and its responsibilities call to us. We cannot ignore them. To uplift ourselves and our society, we will endure paths that are filled with thorns. We will not worry about what others say or do. We will be guided only by our own conscience. Let those who wander aimlessly in the dark do so, but we will take refuge in the light of our wisdom and move forward. We will not look for support from others, we will always be guided by our soul and our conscience, and we will have the courage to carry out our tasks as wise people should. The Power of Valor Contemporary reformers are practically laughable. These false preachers shout down from rooftops that they will bring about religious, social, and political change. However, the differences between their words and actions are glaring. In these situations, any sense of hope seems dim. We do not need to wait quietly for a bright future, nor do we need to feel helpless and dependent on others to usher it in. We have the power to create it ourselves. Do not stray. The desire to survive can quickly give way to the desire for wealth, fame, and material success, each of which is so powerful that an ordinary person can be easily swept away. Only those with their sights set on higher ideals can remain firm against the tide. When you feel lost, remember when determination first took root in your heart. Make sure that your commitment to your cause is not ebbing away. The importance of hard work and desire. The desire to achieve something is an immensely powerful force. It can drive a person to work a hundred times harder than his normal capacity. You might be surprised at what I have achieved. From writing so much literature to bringing together so many people, even beginning this revolution and creating so many ashrams, how did all this happen? This is the result of hard work and a desire to achieve. If I had not applied myself to hard work, 
I might have remained the type of person for whom it is difficult even to make his own living. I would have accumulated money for my own petty entertainment by whatever means possible, but I would never have been able to accomplish such Himalayan tasks will retain your mental equilibrium. The combination of contemplation and character. Instead of looking for faults in others, discover your own faults. There is nothing to be gained by finding faults in others. You are only responsible for the mental and physical weaknesses of your own person. One fourth of the circumstances you receive are a result of your own past actions. Nevertheless, three fourths of the situation life gives you are a result of your current outlook and the effectiveness with which you are fulfilling your duties. If you take up the task of correcting yourself, you can solve many of your mental and physical problems. No one is impressed by those who talk a great deal and accomplish very little. Those who have incorporated contemplation and character into their lives, however, can influence many people. Such people are the ones who make a difference in their environment. Believe in the strength of your soul. It is useless to complain that circumstances are not favorable, or that no one helps you, or that there are no opportunities for you. People say things like this only to blame their misfortune on others or cover their own personal shortcomings. Some people even blame such things on their fate or luck and beg for a better fortune from various deities. This is all because they lack confidence in themselves. We often fall prey to jealousy and fail to consider that others have achieved happiness because of their own hard work. God does not play favorites. He has given everyone the opportunity and the strength of soul to make progress. Awaken your self-confidence. When you find yourself in adverse situations and you feel that nothing is under your control, take it as a sign that you lack self-confidence. Until you change your mindset, you cannot be rid of these adverse situations. You cannot create favorable conditions until you believe that you are fully capable of doing so. If you do not change your thinking now, the divinity in you will diminish. Tell yourself that the divinity within you is working in your favor and replace your mental weakness with this awakened self-confidence. You are your own friend and enemy. Do not dwell on repeated failures. You have plenty of time before you. Start afresh and keep performing your duties properly. Success will be yours in due time. Do not beg others for help, because in reality, no one has the capacity to truly help you. Likewise, do not blame others when you are depressed, as no one has the capacity to cause you pain. You are your own friend and enemy. Every situation you find yourself in, whether good or bad, is of your own creation. Change your outlook towards a situation and fight away the fear surrounding it will vanish. The Spirit of Sportsmanship If you wish to do something extraordinary, do not pay attention to what others think of your goals and plans. If they see you as an unrealistic dreamer, ignore it. Have faith in yourself. Do not let your faith waver because of someone's words or an adverse condition. If you keep going, you will ultimately find a way to proceed. Keep applying your efforts, but do it with the spirit of sportsmanship. Do not give up even upon losing. Live in contentment. It is only wise to be prepared for changing times. You should never feel conceited about your successes, happinesses, luxuries, or progress because you do not know how long these will last. If they do not, there is no point in spending your energy complaining, despairing, or becoming angry. Use your time to think through the situation and devise a solution, or otherwise reconcile yourself to it. In the end, this will be more beneficial for you. Real intelligence comes from finding happiness in whatever is available and in this way, keeping your mental balance.
Balance your thoughts and actions. When the mind is pulled in too many directions, it cannot accomplish anything. It becomes disturbed by half-completed tasks and runs out of control. When it is burdened with too many tasks, it cannot complete a single one. You quickly lose time, energy, and more importantly, temper. By limiting your tasks and organizing your thoughts, you will not be as likely to waste your energies, and you will be able to achieve greater success in the tasks you undertake. Before starting a task, saturate your mind with noble thoughts. This is the formula for worldly success. While we cannot change situations, we can change ourselves and accommodate a situation and remain cheerful. Do not keep expectations of others. Expecting that people will agree with us and do what we say causes mental stress and complicates our lives. The solution to this is to concentrate on our work and let others work at their own pace. We should never try to dominate anyone, and neither should we try to please everyone. In both these things, our valuable time and energy are wasted. The Essence of Religion The greatest source of stress these days is a disorganized lifestyle. People are always rushing to complete things, and every moment of their day is occupied by thoughts of work. There is no time left for thoughts about life. A healthy lifestyle must include time for rest and relaxation. This will enable us to reach our full potential. Therefore, it is necessary to organize everyday life so that this critical aspect is included in the routine. In order to utilize our God-given capabilities to their full potential, we have to integrate honesty, discipline, self-control, and well-organized surroundings into our life. The essence of religion is to enjoy performing our duties and face adversity fearlessly. Self-confidence and perpetual effort. Great men have always begun as ordinary people. They did not despair or lose self-esteem because of this. They kept on going on the strength of self-confidence and perpetual effort. Even in adverse situations, they did not remove their sights from their goal. Even with limited resources and strength, they continued to offer their lives up for country, religion, society, and humanity. The Purposeful Life We spend much of our lives trying to acquire food, shelter, and various sensory pleasures. We center ourselves around the body and activities associated with it. But if this is all there is to life, what is the difference between humans and animals? Since humans are the most enlightened beings, they also have greater responsibilities. Those who do not comply with these responsibilities of human life are not worthy of being called human.